Hello, my name is Erin Code, and I am a fifth grade teacher at Cascade Elementary School. On March 13th, when I left my 33 fifth graders, I never would have imagined that that was the last time I would be sitting in front of them, um, as I'm sure a lot of you were posed with the same worries of how are we going to provide feedback? How are we going to continue teaching and meeting the needs of these kids? Um, the first few weeks, not going to lie, it was tough. I was struggling to find ways to type comments to them. They couldn't see the comments. Um, I had a few friends who, they aren't the best readers. I'm, we all have those kids where I'm trying to redirect how to do long division, and yet they're having struggles just reading what I was writing. So... It took me a little bit of trial and error, and I want to share with you a way that I found to provide feedback that's quick on my end. I mean, I need that, right? We all need that. Quick on my end and meaningful to the kids. Um, one of the best comments that I got throughout this distance learning is when I started making these quick screencastify videos for feedback for kiddos. And a kid said, thank you so much for the video. It was almost like we were in the classroom and you were teaching me directly. And I was like, I found it. This is what is needed. So it's not going to take a lot of time. Um, I don't edit the videos. I don't always appear in the videos either. Like when I'm in the basement hiding from my own children. And, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to put my, video, my face on that video but they can still hear me saying their name, talking to them, using their screen that they see um, to find the misconceptions, to give them some guidance on what they are to be doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at Screencastify and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so this is my um, Google Classroom that I used for the week. I'm sure a lot of people's look similar broken down by week and by assignment. So last week, that's last week, we were working on um, division review or extension based on what their pre-assessment was. So I had a friend in the extension activity and I blocked off names here just for privacy purposes, but this child specifically, they were on the extension. They showed great work on their pre-assessment, but they were having some problems with one of our warm-up slides. So I put a special video for them, and I'll show you that here in a second, um, to explain to them how to do the problem instead of typing in comments like I was the first couple of weeks. I was typing in all these comments saying like slide five and then writing like a paragraph trying to explain to them what the issue was. Instead, I've created this screencastify quick feedback and this was the best comment that I've gotten from anybody he says thank you for the video it helped so much and it felt like you were teaching me in the classroom and I was like boom I've got it so let me show you that video now I'm just gonna open up this work here is his weekly work he had a couple errors um, his video is a little longer but we're gonna specifically look at his video for problem two so let's take a look at that all right, we are gonna look at problem two now. Here it's asking us to find the area of this worktop bench. Now this is the warm up, so we're not into division yet. We know that area, we need to multiply length times width. So I'm gonna pop into a new screen. And for this one, it's a little trickier because we have, if you take a look here on the problem, mixed numbers. We have two and one fourth, and we need to multiply that times one and a half. The way that we're going to look at first is called the distributive property. It's something you'll see a lot in middle school. We'll set up our problem, 2 and 1 fourth times 1 and 1 half. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass out each section. We're going to think of 2 and 1 fourth as 2 and then 1 fourth. So we'll take 2 and we'll pass or distribute it out. 2 times 1 is 2. We're going to pass it out to the next. 2 times 1 half or 1 half of 2, oh, multiply, is 1. And then we're going to take the next part, that 1 fourth, and we're going to pass or distribute it out. 1 fourth 
times one is one fourth. And then we will pass or distribute it out one fourth times one half. Well, we know if we're multiplying fractions, we just multiply numerator and denominator, so that would be one eighth. Now we're left with these four numbers here on the bottom. We passed them out. Now we got to bring them all back together. We just add them up. Two plus one is three. And then we have the fractions there. Well, I know one fourth I can change by going four times two is eight. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. One times two is two. And we're left with two plus one is three. And then two eighths plus one eighth is three eighths. That's the first way we could take a look at it. All right, so I stopped the video there. There's a little bit more to his, but y'all don't need to know how to find the area <laughs> of his worktop bench. Um, what I wanna show you is how I created that video. As you notice, there were some like mess ups with the pen. It was not edited. So within five minutes of me seeing his work, seeing the struggles he was having or the misconceptions, I was able to go ahead and pop in that quick video, just like if he was sitting at my guided group table, and I could explain pointing at his work, because that was his screen, exactly what steps he needed to take for correction. So let me go ahead and show you how you can record a quick Screencastify, either video, if you want to show your face. I found that if I have my face in it, all the kids are doing is like staring at me and they're like, you are wearing your glasses or is that a picture of your family in the background? Like it's distracting. So I usually just have my voice on there as you saw on this last one. So let's pop over and take a look at how you can create a quick Screencastify video to include a link um, like you saw on this one where it said click here um, to go towards your Screencastify video or if you wanna embed a link in a document or just give them the link itself. So let's go ahead and pop over there and take a look now. All right, so here is the warm up for this kiddo's work for this week. And he had a couple issues. And instead of writing all the comments over here um, and on their iPad, it comes on their main screen and then they have to click back and forth. So I found that writing directly on your slides or putting the video on your slides is most efficient for what I found. So we're gonna look specifically at problem two. If you already have Screencastify, this link up here, um, installed on your computer, you're good to go. If you do not, there are multiple videos out there that will help you with that. Um, but to get you started, you just go to Window and Extensions. So mine's already installed. Put my wrong button. You click on that arrow. We're gonna be sharing our desktop so this kiddo will see his own work internal microphone, and then the webcam I usually keep off. Again, that's if you wanted to have your video, a picture of you as you're talking down here or anywhere on the page. Um, I found it's a little distracting, so I just keep it off. So you're gonna hit record. It's gonna ask if you want your entire screen or application window. I don't really even know what this one is. Let's do entire screen. And then it's gonna give you a countdown. I always come down here, get ready. I put it on pause. I'm not ready to talk to them yet. So I'm getting ready. I'm gonna look at problem two. I'm ready to talk to them. That's a great part with Screencastify. Saved me a lot of time is to pause it now while you're recording as opposed to having to go back and edit it later. So I'm gonna record. I would tell them, hey, this is the problem that we're looking at. Let's take a look at it on another slide. I pause it again, and then I add a slide and just copy and paste the work onto the next slide. In order to write on this slide, you're gonna use these, whoop, these tools right down here, specifically the pen option. I would highly warn you about using this. I thought it was an undo button. It is not, it is a restart recording. So if you've done a five minute video, and you push that thinking you're just gonna get rid of the last thing, you're gonna get rid of everything. Do not push that button. All right, so we're here, we're paused, and I, I'm gonna talk to them a little bit. I hit the play button or the record. 
So the first thing you're gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, is multiply two and one fourth. I pause it. I use my pen because my finger writing on this is crazy. Two and one fourth. And that way they don't have to see you sitting here struggling to write on here. It's gonna be quicker. And I find the more succinct and smaller the message is, the more likely they are to listen to you, okay? Times one and a half. Paused it again so I can write in what I was saying. Okay, so you'll have everything here. Now another thing in what you saw in the video is you can change the color of this pen just like you would if you were highlighting something in class and then come back and record. Two times one is two. Two times one half is one. You can pause it and change your color. Um, if you do make a mistake, your finger writing's kind of crazy, you can hit that erase button and it would just erase everything there for you. When you are done with your video, so I'm gonna pretend like I'm done here, you're gonna hit stop sharing and it's gonna pull you into a new tab. Now this tab is your Screencastify tab. It'll tell you up here in the um, address bar. This one we did was just about 30 seconds long. You can tell, I'm gonna pause it here. It always starts on mute for you. So if you're like, oh, I didn't record my voice, it did. Um, I'm gonna unmute it so you can see where I paused and how it just automatically picks up here for us. So let's take a quick look. Oop, move that out of my way. A quick look at that here. I put it on pause. I would tell them, hey, this is the problem that we're looking at. Let's take a look at it on another slide. So the first thing you're gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, is multiply two and one fourth times one and a half. Two times one is two. Two times one half. So you can see how each time I paused it, it kind of clicked. So if your video is ready to go, you don't have to mess and spend time on the editor. You'll copy the shareable link. It says copied, okay? So that's on your clipboard. You come back to wherever you want to put um, the link. For this one, I'm gonna put it right here on the warm up. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You can come over here and you can add it as a link um, that they would have to cut and paste. Not the most efficient. They might not even know what that means. What I found is if you go to image, add an image, I always just search for click and it's the first one that comes up. I'm gonna to select to put that image on this document or in this case, this slide. And I keep it a little bit bigger because on their iPad, you wanna make sure they can click on it. Then you come up to the little link button on your toolbar. Your image is highlighted or boxed in. You click link and you're going to paste that link that we just had over here on the screen, Castify. We copied it. We're gonna put that link directly on here so that when a kid comes, put it right on there, apply. When they come to see, oh, what feedback do you, did she leave for me? They will be able to click on that big red button that says click here and it will take them directly to your feedback video. So that is the easiest way that I have found to provide quick, effective feedback to students. They can see it directly on their work. Um, I know that I showed you with the Google Slides, but when you use the screen Castify, you can use that with a PDF file using the highlight the um, pen feature to annotate on their text to show them specifically where they want to do. My example there with math, I think it's invaluable for math to show them step by step. You can give them one example and then have them go back. I have not found a way for them to respond to me yet. Um, 
with the same kind of video feedback or audio feedback. Um, but if I find out, I will let you know. So I hope you found that helpful. If you do have any questions, um, certainly shoot me an email. Let me know. I'll be happy to try and navigate it with you together. All right. Let me know how it goes. Thanks.